well to discuss her visions for the future. I'm joined now by P Pippa Malgram, president of the Canterbury Group. Pippa, it is interesting, isn't it? It's almost a divide between looking at these companies, you know, looking at what Siemens, Sony, Shell are saying, and uh, then also looking at what the Fed is saying. W where do we, how do we decipher these mixed messages? You know, I trust the what the companies are telling us, not just their results, but what they're projecting about the future. And they're telling us that they think that unless things really dramatically deteriorate, they're profitable. And even if things got a little worse, they're still profitable. Uh, so I buy that story more than when I see the chairman standing in front of Congress who faced an election this autumn, uh, who are basically torturing him, saying, you know, tell us you're going to deal with downside risk. And so he says, yes, yes, we will, if necessary. That's exactly what I was going to talk to you about. I mean, how much of this is the politics of it all? Uh, in a way, uh, it seems like America gets paralyzed a little bit before these midterms. Yes, America gets paralyzed. Well, it's and this midterm is important because at midnight on uh, November the 4th, the presidential election begins. Mm. I mean, that's really when the race starts. So the focus is very intense. But I think the bottom line is when I read the Beige Book report, it actually says that overall economic activity continued to improve. Mm. That's the bottom line. And when you look at the margins and how they're better and the pricing power is better in the corporates, that makes me relatively optimistic that, you know, it's slow, but it's going in the right direction. What are the concerns? I mean, are we are we on the home straight now? There must still be some pitfalls out there we have to be worried about. Huge. Well, we still have this massive debt burden bearing down uh, on all the Western industrialized economies. And my personal view remains that the only way to deal with it is going to be through default. Uh, and there are different ways you can default. You can default through inflation. Uh, and more and more, I think that that's what we're going to end up with. We see signs of inflation all over the emerging markets already. It's very difficult, though, within your Europe, of course, because the, the classic default uh, devaluation route, which has uh, you know, worked quite well in South America and indeed has worked in the past in Europe, is no longer available to countries like uh -huh. Ireland, Greece, Spain is it at the no moment. no longer available? Like, I mean, ISTA, ISTA overnight came out and said banks need to start preparing yeah. for the possible withdrawal of a Eurozone member from the Eurozone. This idea that uh, Greece cannot walk away, I think, is insane. They're a sovereign, you know, and a political decision will be made at some point. What's the benefit of taking capital from the Europeans and promising austerity we can't deliver versus devaluing and getting growth? At some point, the calculation is going to go the other way. Okay, Pippa, great to talk to you. Come back and talk to us again soon. Thank you very Thank much you. for that.